Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Um, we're glad that you could be with us this morning uh, virtually. We're glad that uh, we have this technology, and we thank you for your presence. And uh, we're about to open up God's Word, but let's just start with a word of prayer um, and an announcement. Uh, the church will be doing Grace Henderson's funeral uh, here at the church September 19th, and I don't know any more details yet. Uh, we just finalized the date. So um, I will be sending stuff out over the prayer chain uh, so you'll know uh, how it's going to happen. So let's uh, just uh, open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you and we lift up uh, Jean and Joan, Lord. We lift up uh, the, the uh, Grace's children and uh, grandchildren, Lord. We pray your blessing and your comfort over them. Be with us as we open your word this morning, Lord, as we uh, look at Scripture to see what it is you're trying to say to us, Lord. And I thank you for the message that you laid on my heart. And now give me uh, what I need to speak it properly, Lord, uh, the way that you want it said. And we thank you uh, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to be reading from the book of John. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. Um, and, and they're very well-known scriptures. Uh, very well-known passage. But... Uh, Something interesting uh, struck my heart this week about it, and I just felt led to preach about it. So John 21, verses 15 to 17, and I'll be reading out of the New International Version. And it is, uh, the title of this is, Jesus Reinstates Peter. So it starts off in verse 15, it says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is, of course, like I said, the reinstatement of Simon Peter. And, and we all know the story, right? But I just, I just want to go through it. On the night that Jesus was betrayed and arrested, Peter denied three times that he even knew Jesus, right? He was, he was put to the test. He was questioned. People recognized him and said he was with him. And, and Peter denied it three times. Now, this was not a surprise to Jesus. He wasn't shocked by it. And, and it should not have been a surprise to Peter because Jesus had told him at the Last Supper that very evening that this would happen. Um, in Luke 22, verse 34, Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Jesus knew very well it was going to happen. And now Peter did. But then, uh, during the situation that we're talking about, during that time where they were saying to Peter, that pointing out Peter and saying, hey, he was with him, he's part of his group, and, and Peter is in the process of denying him, just as he denies him the three times, uh, this is what happens. In Luke 22 again, verse 61, it says, The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. So all that happened at, at the arrest and the trial of Jesus where they found him guilty of blasphemy. Uh, they beat him, they whipped him, they mocked him, and then they crucified him. Jesus died and was buried in a borrowed tomb. And Simon Peter never had a chance to say, I'm so sorry. Um, and I'm sure that was just overwhelming. I'm sure Peter wanted to run up to Jesus and say, I am so sorry. I wonder if Peter spent the next few days thinking about all that Jesus had done and all the things that he had said and all that Peter had witnessed over the three years that he had spent with him in ministry. I wonder if he thought about these words of Jesus. In Matthew 10, Jesus said, uh, verses 32 and 33, Jesus said, whoever acknowledges me before others... I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. And I wonder if Peter thought of those words as he sat there 
uh, for those three days. Can you imagine how Peter felt? Just try and put yourself in his shoes for a minute. I'm sure that Peter figures that there's, there, there's, there's no way back from this. And, and, and we all remember how Peter was called, right? Peter was a fisherman, and Peter's out fishing on the boat, and they can't catch any fish. And Jesus says, throw the net on the other side. And so he does it, and then he gets, comes to the beach, and he's looking at Jesus, and Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, I, I, I keep saying that Peter had no idea what that meant, but he follows him. And I'm sure that right now, Peter's thinking there's no way back from this. And that fisher of men thing, fishers of men thing is off the table. I'm sure that he's just heartbroken, shameful of his actions, and his weakness in that situation. I also think it would be very natural for him to just go fishing with his friends and try and figure out, like, where do I go from here? In the passage of Scripture we started with, we see how... Uh, Jesus appears again to some of his disciples, including Peter, in John 21, verses 1 to 10. And there's a lot of scripture I'm going to read, but I just want you to get the story. It says, After, Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out fishing, Simon Peter told them. And as I said, I, I completely understand this. And they said, we'll go with you. So he went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. And he called friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, and we know the disciple whom Jesus loved, he's referred to several times, is John. It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the moat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals. There were fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said, bring some of the fish you have just caught. And then we jump into the scripture I started with. Then he takes Peter to the side and he asks him those famous three questions. Or, or maybe we should say he asked him the same question three times. Do you love me? I want to take you back. I want to take you back with me to the first time that I met my first pastor. Pastor Jim Ennis was a young pastor fresh out of seminary, and he came here to Franklin Center to pastor our church. Our daughter Mallory had been born uh, and after we had been married for about two years. Brenda had grown up in the Franklin Center church, but had walked away in her teen years, as so many of us seem to do. I uh, was very actively working on the other team. God was clearly working at my heart. And when I, I was asked if we could dedicate Mallory, who was, uh, I think she was only like three or four weeks old, um, for some reason, at, at the Franklin Center Church of the Nazarene, which I knew nothing about, God must have been working on my heart. And, and we talk about prevenient grace, and I think God was just trying to soften my heart because I said yes. And so um, Pastor Jim was going to come to our house. Um, never had that happen before where uh, the, the parson's coming a calling. <laughs> um, I was a little bit nervous, and, and Jim came, a young man, very soft-spoken, uh, and he came into our house one evening, and we introduced ourselves, and the fir very first thing he really said to me, the very first question that he asked me, because I, I was assuming that I was going to be drilled about why I wanted my daughter dedicated, and I had absolutely no idea why we were doing this. Um, I knew that you should baptize children, but I didn't know why. Uh, I, I didn't know that dedication was something, uh, christenings, whatever, however you want to 
call it. I knew you did it, but I didn't know why. I knew nothing about God, and I knew nothing about a relationship with God. So the very first question that he asked me was, in his very soft-spoken voice, he said, Randy, do you love Jesus? <laughs> now, this, this might seem like a very straightforward question, or maybe even a strange question. But all these years later, I think it was the best question he could have ever asked me. I don't think uh, I did a very good job of answering, or at least I don't think I gave him the answer that he was maybe hoping for. Um, because the thought of a relationship with Jesus was not even something that I could wrap my head around. Uh, I, I think I said that I didn't hate him. I think I said that, that I believed in Jesus. Um, I believed he was real, but I didn't know him yet. Do you know what Jim said next? He looked at me and he smiled and he said, well, I can work with that. Um, and 30 years later, I can say, yes, Jim. Yes, Jim. I love Jesus with all my heart. You see, Jim didn't need to know about my past. That, that, was, that was not a question that was ever put on the table. The only question that was asked of me is, do you love Jesus? Because reality is, that's the only question that matters. Do you love Jesus? He didn't need to know about my past. He wasn't there to drag me through the mud and make me feel bad and lay this big guilt trip on me and ask me what I did and why I did it and who my friends were and why I was still hanging out with them and why I was being such a hypocrite and dedicating my daughter in the church and trying to live in two worlds. Although I wasn't trying to live in two worlds, I was just trying to figure out what world I was in. See, the question was just, do you love Jesus? <laughs> You see, Jim wasn't interested in my past. He was more concerned about my future. And you see, this is what I see. This is what's happening with Peter. Jesus doesn't need to know Peter's past. He knows it. He didn't need to say, why did you collapse like a house of cards? Why did you say that you didn't even know me? Why didn't you stand up and announce your faith to the world? He already knew the answer. He knew absolutely everything Peter had done since before Peter was born. That was not the question. The question was, do you love me? Jesus, like Jim, was not interested in the past, but in the future. Jesus could forgive and forget all Peter's sins and all Peter's past. Because Peter said three times that he loved Jesus, Jesus could work with that. And work he did. Peter followed Jesus to the cross and never once faltered again. Peter, uh, Peter's past only reminded him of a loving and forgiving Savior. So I'd like to close with this, some questions, or a question, and pretty sure you know what it is. Do you love Jesus? Like Jim, like Jesus, I'm not interested in your past. I don't need to know what you've done. I don't need to know what guilt you're carrying. It's all wiped away in a heartbeat. If you do, or if you'd like to, call on him. Call on him, the savior of your future, and he'll work with you. The future is always bright with Jesus. I want to read the passage of Scripture that we started with again. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Jesus answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Third time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. 
In saying those words, Jesus is saying, all is forgiven. All is behind you. The future is bright. Do you love me? Question is, do we love him? Let us pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for your word, and I thank you for the message that's in there, that you are not interested in all the things that I've done wrong and all the things that we've done wrong, that you're not a God who's interested in churning up our past and sticking it in our face, but you are a God who's interested in wiping that slate clean and saying, let's start today. Let's start this new life right now. If you do not know Jesus, I encourage you, pray to him. Dear Lord, just be with that person right now who's struggling with this decision. Fill their hearts. Soften their heart as you soften mine, Lord. That they would reach out to him, reach out to you and say, uh, maybe I don't love you yet, but I do want to. Start to work in that life, Lord, and show, show us a bright future. Show us a hope. So, show, show us eternal life that never ends with you. And I thank you that your love can travel through the ages and can travel through this video and travel through all things because you're with all people at all times, Lord. I pray that you would just touch that person's heart, that they would know you in a new and exciting way and that their heart would burst with love for you and for others. Lord, I think back to the two commandments. What is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Lord, give us the power to do that. In your name, amen.